Building mass is all about making slow and steady progress. And to be able to track progress properly, we usually stick to the same tried and true exercises. While we might deviate a bit when it comes to smaller isolation movements, the heavy compound exercises we do typically stay the same. But what if those same exercises are no longer working like they used to? While these familiar lifts are essential for building a good muscular foundation, they may not be the most effective or sustainable anymore. The years of pounding your joints through the same ranges of movement might have led to nagging pains, dysfunctional movement patterns, or even injuries. Or maybe, mentally, your training has grown stale from doing the same things over and over again, so it's hard to push yourself and you end up with diminishing gains. It's times like these when exploring unconventional compound lifts can breathe new life into your training program. Today, I want to share 5 highly effective mass building exercises you're not doing, but should be. Number 1. Pen lay rows. A problem with traditional bent over rows is that most lifters cannot keep good form throughout the entire set, often resulting in a lot of stress on the lower back. On the other hand, the pen lay row is lower back friendly. Unlike its hanging counterparts, this row involves starting each repetition from a dead stop. This subtle adjustment eliminates the use of momentum and forces a stricter form leading to enhanced muscle engagement, cleaner reps, and reduced strain on the lower back. According to this study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, the bent over row produced large activation symmetrically from the upper to the lower back. And because of its similarities, it's safe to assume that the pen lay row is excellent for targeting your entire back musculature. To set up for the penlay row, stand with your feet at roughly shoulder width, with the bar just over the front of your foot. Hinge back, positioning your chest almost parallel to the floor. From there, grab the bar with a pronated grip at about shoulder width. Unlike a barbell row, where we first deadlift the weight into position, we will instead be pulling directly from the ground here. To maximize gains in both upper back thickness and lat width, here are a few cues to keep in mind. First, allow your scapula to both retract and protract throughout the movement. According to this study, the traps are trained best when you allow the scapula to move. Given the similar orientation and location of the other upper back muscles, we can presume that they are also best trained this way. So, when performing the penlay row, make sure to reach for the floor and accentuate the stretch. Second, keep the bar in line with your chest and pull the bar towards your sternum or slightly lower. According to this study, the lats when working in the sagittal plane have their best leverage when performing humeral extension from shoulder level and down. Lastly, aim to get as much shoulder extension as you can, driving your elbows past your torso to maximize engagement of the lats plus the rear delts. Number 2. Push Press Push presses engage a myriad of muscle groups including the shoulders, triceps, core, and lower body, specifically your knee and hip extensors. It follows a movement pattern that begins with a forceful leg drive, propelling the barbell overhead, and continues into an explosive flexion of the shoulders and extension of the arms. Thus, the push press is a dynamic compound lift that builds explosive strength and power throughout the upper and lower body. As an integrated movement, the push press enables you to handle heavier loads than traditional overhead presses. Thus, it may be the lift you need to get over your shoulder strength and size plateau. For one, according to this study from the Journal of Physiology, a 12-week dynamic training period led to better maximal voluntary muscle contraction due to positive adaptations to motor unit behavior. This suggests that push pressing would lead to better high threshold motor unit recruitment. To perform the push press effectively, begin with a shoulder width stance and a firm grip on the barbell. Initiate the movement by bending the knees and driving through the lower body to propel the barbell upward. 
As the barbell ascends, extend the arms forcefully overhead, locking out the elbows at the peak of the movement. From there, lower the bar back into the starting position and repeat. According to this study, the front delts gain peak leverage when at 120 degrees of shoulder flexion. Lower than that, and the upper pecs have more or equal leverage and thus activation. So, the push press simply helps you get past the sticking point in the lift and therefore does not limit the stimulus on your shoulders. Number 3 floor press. The floor press provides a shoulder-friendly alternative to traditional bench presses, effectively targeting the chest, shoulders, and triceps while alleviating strain on the shoulder joint. Its grounded nature makes it suitable for individuals with biomechanical limitations or discomfort during standard chest pressing movements. For those who cannot or should not perform deep stretches, this press is your safest option when it comes to a compound pushing movement movement that you can still load heavily. It prevents shoulder issues and pec tears by limiting overstretching at the shoulder joint and avoiding excessive strain on the pec tendon. It's also a great exercise for your triceps and lockout strength. Thus, floor presses will help you improve your pressing performance and help you lift more weight in any other pressing exercise. And being able to lift more weight is never a bad thing whether you're training for strength or size. To execute the floor press effectively, set up a squat rack with the J-hooks positioned at knee height. Lie down beneath the barbell, aligning your eyes directly beneath it. Grip the bar with an overhand slightly wider than shoulder width grip. Pull your shoulders back and down, pressing your upper back firmly into the floor for stability. Unrack the bar and lower it until the back of your upper arms lightly touch the floor. Then explosively extend your arms to push the weight back up to full extension. The biggest benefit of the floor press is that it helps you break free from poor bench press habits such as dropping the bar quickly, bouncing it off your chest, and excessive use of leg drive. Instead, it It'll help you learn or relearn to control your movement and your range of motion, reducing the risk of injury and maximizing muscle engagement. Number 4. Good Mornings The barbell good morning was once a fundamental exercise for old school bodybuilders and for good reason. The primary muscles targeted during good mornings include the upper back, spinal erectors, glutes, core, and hamstrings. The spinal erectors and upper back will work isometrically throughout the exercise, while the glutes and hamstrings will be working in hip extension. Unlike the Romanian deadlift, which involves holding the barbell at waist level, the good morning is performed with the barbell across the shoulders, similar to a squat. The movement entails hinging forward at the hips while maintaining a neutral spine until your torso is as close to parallel to the floor as possible. Then, reversing the motion by pressing the upper back into the bar and squeezing the glutes to return to the starting position. Something to keep in mind when performing this exercise Exercise is it's very important to keep your lower back arched to ensure you're keeping tension on the hamstrings and glutes. Also, remember to keep your palms over the barbell and not under it to avoid straining your wrist. Lastly, avoid gripping the bar too wide or too narrow. Instead, aim for a grip slightly wider than shoulder width. Holding the barbell too close or too far apart can affect how tight your upper back is and how well you can keep the position. Number 5 sissy squats. Our quadriceps consist of four muscles, three of which are mainly engaged in standard squats. However, the fourth muscle, the rectus femoris, requires special attention because it crosses both the hip and knee joints. This means that in a conventional squat, where there is simultaneous flexion and extension of both the knees and hips, the relative length of the rectus femoris remains the same so it doesn't contribute substantially to force production. Therefore, it does not experience meaningful growth. Thus, for complete quad training, you should include an exercise where the hips remain locked in place and only the knees move. For this, I recommend the sissy squat. Research shows that greater hypertrophy is observed when muscles are worked at extended lengths. This is where the sissy squat excels as it compels the rectus femoris to perform both hip flexion and 
knee extension, reaching greater degrees of length. And because the sissy squats hit all four of the quadriceps heads, it can create a significant hypertrophic stimulus without the need for heavy lifting. And if you want to make these even more challenging, hold a plate at your chest and gradually increase the load that way. So there you have it. Five mass builders you're not doing, but probably should be. By incorporating these overlooked mass building exercises into your routine, you'll revamp your training and unlock untapped potential for muscle growth. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you're an intermediate or advanced lifter whose muscle gains have stalled and are looking to jumpstart new muscle growth, grab a copy of my Mass 5 Full Body Program. This is a high frequency full body workout for intermediate and advanced lifters who are looking to take their physique to the next level. And right now, you can get an additional 25% off by using the coupon code MASS25. If you want to learn more, click the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.